Cyberpunk 2077 usually encourages fast-paced gameplay with its chaotic combat, high-speed driving and split-second decision-making. And yet, I feel the game shines most when you slow down and let yourself drift into the strange allure of Night City. The cyberpunk genre is fascinating because it never hides how terrible day-to-day -day life is, and yet it offers a strange comfort. The coziness of a small apartment, the vibrant foods from the crowded stalls, and of course the neon glow at night as rain pours from a light-polluted sky. It's the show designed to distract you from what goes on behind the scenes, and honestly, I love embracing it in 2077. But the amount you can immerse yourself into Night City is a tad bit limited with the gameplay on offer. And so, I've sought out a number of roleplay and immersion mods that fill the gap. And having just completed a 120 hour playthrough with these mods, it offered one of the most unique open world experiences I've ever played. For starters is a mod which is very overlooked when it comes to immersion, that being game time tweaks. It offers options for making days last longer, making nights last longer, or if you're insane like me, you can actually make one in-game day last 24 hours in real life. And there's a couple reasons why I think this works so well. For starters, it solves the pacing issues with Victor saying you'll likely have weeks to live, as now a full playthrough won't take up like hundreds of in-game days. And also, Cyberpunk's nights are strangely short with the sun rising around 3am, and as someone who prefers how the city looks at night, it stops me from having to skip time so frequently. Next there's Artistic, which offers new art pieces that can be found and purchased around Night City, all of which can be displayed in your apartments. Parking Spots Enhanced parks your primary vehicle nearby when you rest at an apartment. Immersive Fixers makes the first call of fixers a little less abrupt, so they'll no longer immediately call you as you travel the city, but instead they'll call you after completing a few NCPD missions in their territory. Next up is Survival System, and I know survival mechanics aren't for everyone, but this mod comes with so many settings that I think it's worth a try. You'll now need to eat, sleep and drink, or else you'll suffer debuffs. Plus there's an option for ammo and consumables to have weight, and honestly, this mod works so seamlessly that you'd think it was part of the base game, although remember to adjust the debuff rates if you're using the Game Time Tweaks mod. Plus it encourages you to visit your apartment more, and engage with the vending machines and street vendors. Speaking of, the Street Vendors mod allows you to trade with most street vendors you stumble across. And keeping with survival mechanics, Wannabe Edgerunner adds a humanity system, where the more you kill and the more cyberware you use can turn you into a cyber psycho, where you go berserk and have the police chase after you. But there are neuro blockers you can purchase to keep your humanity from dropping. And while I do love this mod, I personally increase the maximum amount of humanity I have, and disable punishments for using cyberware like Sandevistan. I just found it made my humanity drop way too quickly if I forgot a neuro blocker. Then there's the Addicted mod, where overuse of certain consumables can make you addicted and create buffs or debuffs depending on your use. Immersive Rippers simply lets you sit in Ripper's chairs when upgrading cyberware, instead of awkwardly standing there. If you think V being able to carry a ton of giant weapons in their pocket is unrealistic, Limited Encumbrance lowers your base carrying capacity and edits how capacity perks are calculated. And I know it's fun to loot everything, but also having to be picky with what weapons you carry does add an extra layer to combat. Economy Tweaks and Balance stops V from becoming incredibly rich early on. It balances the price of ammos and weapons and so on. But what I really enjoy are the hugely increased prices of cyberware, as now they really feel like specialty items, and you have to be picky with what you buy. Although with this mod, if you're someone who enjoys collecting every car and apartment, I wouldn't recommend it as you probably won't have the spare cash for it all. But there is the chance of making some extra money if you gamble with gangs, provided with this working gambling system. Immersive crafting access adds a penalty for disassembling items when not at your stash or using the All Things Cyber perk. The Romance Messages mods for Judy and Pan Am will add new text threads that will seamlessly appear throughout a playthrough. And Romance Hangouts Enhanced adds more interactions for partner hangouts. Then with I really wish to stay at your house, you can repeat the partner hangout quest by asking them for a long or short visit. And for those who romance Judy, 
You can control the obnoxiously loud radios and TVs with the interactive Judy's Apartment Devices mod. Or you can spend the night partying in the city with them with the Dance Off mod. And finally for relationships, there's the New Quest series of mods, where you have smaller activities to share with your partner. Because of Cyberpunk's modding limitations, they're nothing crazy, but offer nice moments like watching the sunset together. Next there's SFX Be Gone mod, which offers a few options like removing scanner and UI sound effects, but I personally recommend the Stealth and Combat music removal. As while the soundtrack is great, there's so many times I find myself wanting to listen to the radio while completing gigs and MCPD missions, but suddenly it cuts to a combat track I've heard a ton of times. And don't worry, it keeps the main mission music intact. Pairing nicely with this is Pocket Radio Always Available, which stops the radio from automatically switching off when triggering certain events. They're coming for me! With limited HUD, you have a plethora of options to customise the HUD. I myself have enemy health and detection meters off, and only show my health, stamina, mission markers in combat or with my scanner. And the minimap I only have on while driving. Speaking of which... No camera auto-centering stops the camera from trying to reposition itself while driving. And better vehicle first person lets you set the first person position and FOV so it's far more comfortable to drive. For crazy people like me who only drive in first person. The Kuroshi Optics Night Vision mod adds a new night vision toggle with eye cyberware, because it's really weird there's no night vision or flashlight in the game. For spending time embracing Night City, the Lean Anywhere mod lets you lean on ledges. And the Sit Anywhere mod lets you do the same, but with sitting, obviously. And there's quite a few conversation moments where it's nice to actually rest along with the person you're talking to. For movement, walk by default lets you adjust the speed for walking, jogging, sprinting and crouching. And I personally load the speed slightly for jogging and sprinting, as V can move incredibly fast and it discourages you from taking in the city sights. And I find the smooth movement mod to be a must with this, as it makes strafing feel softer rather than the jarring instant stop of the base game. Then with the immersive first person mod, you have a better view of your body and can freely move your head while standing still. And the better sleeves mod actually shows the sleeves of your outfits, which makes many of the first person cutscenes look far better. There is a bit of jank though, as you see them disappear when using cyber arms, but I think it's a small price to pay. Going back to spending time with partners and friends, the NCI add-on collection of mods lets you have a drink with them in bars and diners where you can use their usual phone dialogue to talk to them. Next we have Enable Advert Animations, and it's a small tweak that really livens up the city. It just makes some of the static adverts into ones that move, and it feels way more natural and brings the buildings to life. And with the no more duplicate NPCs, you'll no longer spot the same NPCs walking with each other in a crowd. Now I'll be talking about combat specific mods, and this is where it's a little more down to personal preference, as they go down the more hardcore difficulty route, but I still feel it's balanced and I think Night City should be a difficult place to survive in. Kicking things off is Hardcore 22, which sets all default humans to a base health of 100, including yourself, which means you can take out enemies quickly with most weapons, but you yourself can also die in just a few hits. The pros for this mod is that it makes stealth far more useful for both the start and end game, as you know, you don't want to get shot. Enemies are no longer unrealistic bullet sponges. It makes most weapons viable so you can stick to whatever feels the most enjoyable to use. It's pretty balanced as while you can die extremely quickly, you can also wipe out a huge group of enemies with ease if you plan your attack. And also, heavily chromed up enemies are made more difficult so going up against a cyber psycho or boss fight feels truly threatening. But as for the cons, early game can be incredibly difficult at times. Like I had to make sure to complete absolutely everything before the Arasaka heist, just so I could buy health cybernetics. Otherwise the large wave of enemies and grenades would have been a giant pain to deal with. Also some cutscenes aren't made with this low health in mind, and it was most notable during scenes where I was in a car chase, as I'd often die after just leaning out the window. It doesn't happen often, but the worst example is when you're playing as Johnny and you have Arasaka chasing you in cars, 
Like, I would just instantly die, so I had to lean to the left or right of the seat just to hide my hitbox so I wouldn't die instantly. It's annoying, but I still made it through the game, so it's clearly not too bad a problem. And finally, just be mentally prepared that sometimes a stray grenade or couple bullets will instantly kill you, and you'll realise you forgot to save and just sort of stare at the screen in pain. So yeah, it's an acquired taste, but having just used the mod for a full playthrough, I honestly can't imagine going back. Anyway, next up is manual reload, so you actually have to press the reload key at the end of a magazine. Immersive weapons offer different tweaks like interruptible reloads, but the one I used adds an extra camera shake to firing. Unlock Me The Mods lets you unequip weapon mods like scopes, because it just seems really strange that you can't. The Ragdoll Physics Overhaul makes ragdolls more realistic and fixes collision problems. Wilson's Range lets you test out your weapons at the Second Amendment gun range at any time. And ending the combat section is Life Path Bonuses and Gang Corp Traits. Now I actually didn't use this mod out of fear it would mess with the balance of the hardcore mod, but it's so popular that I had to add it to this video. It basically makes each gang type have more variety in their damage and weaknesses. So like Voodoo Boys will be immune to ultimate hacks and Maelstrom have increased resistances to assault weapons, and these all vary depending on your life path. Moving on, Simpler XP Multiplier lets you adjust the rates at which you earn XP, and the main things I lowered were the level XP and street cred, as you can reach max level way before hitting the endgame. But with this mod, I reached max level about halfway through the Phantom Liberty DLC, which I left before the final missions, so timed up perfectly. Immersive breathing, uh, ooh, uh, <laughs> immersive breathing adds subtle breathing effect on running and you're out of breath. Dynamic NPC items gives NPCs more items to hold, like phones, tablets, and extra umbrellas. Night City Alive is a mod I chose not to use, but it adds gangs to traffic and increases the chance of police gunfights in the streets. It's a popular mod, but I personally feel that Night City already has so many gunfights going on that I don't really need any more. Plus NPCs get more hostile if you bump into them, and I do that a lot. The Less Samurai mod removes many of the Samurai Band posters and merch scattered about, as it's meant to be a pretty niche band in 2077, yet their presence is strangely everywhere. And finally, we end with the most important mods, Apartment Cats and Pet Your Cat. And there we have it, mods which will immerse you into Night City, and help you forget the grim reality of our real life turning into a cyberpunk fantasy. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps this channel grow, and a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, Shaquille Martin, Mr. Zud, Gorthan, So Doomy, Connor Peterson, John Ratz, Ter Aura, Jake Carlo, and Christian Howell. And thank you to my recent donations on Ko-Fi from Adam and Bram. And also just uh, thank you again because I know the, the videos have been decreasing. Um, it's just because I sort of, I hit a wall where I felt like I was making the same videos over and over again. Uh, and so I just, I needed a mix up. I needed to do something different, hence why I'm doing a cyberpunk thing. Obviously the channel's still pretty similar, um, there's still a mod video I'm making, but I, I just want to shake things up, so um, yeah, thank you everyone who's still supporting despite me taking longer on this video, and I am still working on videos all the time. Uh, my next one will be uh, somewhere, probably be back to Skyrim, we'll see, but uh, yeah, thank you so so much, and uh, farewell everyone.